So I stumbled across this thread in which the group basically discussed, like, hey, we were able to get a significant amount of money in Frosthaven very early. And by very early, I mean, they figured this out before the first winter. So they were able to get a crap ton of gold. Lots of it. Effectively unlimited, actually. And so, knowing me, going through the forums, so I was like, I'm going to open my rule book and tell them how wrong they are and the correct way to handle the situation, as I always do. Uh, but as chance would have it, they, uh, they played it correctly. So we're going to dig into how they did this and the ramification of having endless gold. If you want to be kept up to date with all things Frosthaven, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Uh, if you do enjoy your content, be sure to hit like. And if you want to support us, consider joining our Patreon. We'll have all sorts of Frosthaven guides, including early access to those for patrons. So in the post, the group was able to complete a scenario until they realized at the end uh, they could just run around and scoop up all the loot tokens, and they had gained a significant amount of gold, but hardly any loot. And they realized that the difference between a win and a loss, according to the rules, so it was like... What was even the point? And they're like, well, we should try this scenario over. Then they found out, wait, we keep all our gold and the experience we gained, but we don't have to go back and reset the time if we replay the scenario. Because you have the option to keep all like the metal, wood, hide, and herbs and stuff like that if you go back and mark off another passage of time. However, you can immediately replay the scenario and not mark any uh, passage of time. And you have to forfeit all of the metal, lumber, hide, and herbs that you looted over the scenario. Boo. But not EXP and not coins. So they offered to throw it. Why would someone just deliberately throw a scenario? As a Survivor fan, at least when playing against Boston Rob, you do not throw a scenario. What are the ramifications? You give up all the non-loot, keep the golden experience. How does this happen? In theory, you could play an unlimited amount of the scenario, collect endless gold if you wanted to, and then the passage of time won't be any different. You'll have accumulated... 100, 200, 1,000, f it, just put an infinity symbol there and just say, that's your gold. Infinity. So in theory, you could have like all that gold and ride in on Frosthaven on level nine characters. Now, of course, you'd have to like play the scenario, lose it, play the scenario, lose it. And you're not going to get any check marks from that and so on and so forth. So it's not necessarily going to be all everything. And additionally, you don't actually have any of the metal, wood, hide, and herbs, except for the ones you got on the final time you played the scenario where you decided that you won. Now, who would actually go through the tedious exercise of setting up the scenario hundreds of times uh, re and redoing it hundreds of times? And what's the difference between just skipping the setup and teardown and just saying, we, we did that? And what's the difference between that and just writing Finity symbol on all the gold signs? There is no difference. They're all the same thing. So that thing is cheating. It's an exploit that's meant to make people feel their time wasn't wasted. So if you like do get a scenario and you're like, oh, we want to replay it and like, oh, we lost all that. Well, you do at least get to keep your goal and your experience and, you know, try again. If you fail the scenario and you're like, oh, we did fine. Let's just go back. You keep all your, you keep everything. And you go back to Frosthaven and check a passage of time. So no matter what, either A, you check off a passage of time, which I consider to be a bit of a penalty in terms of the um, uh, w like winning to losing uh, scenarios ratio. You want to be winning every time uh, you get a passage of time, potentially multiple scenarios if possible. That's why I like the linked scenarios. But it's also meant as a way to say like, hey, you failed a scenario and you want to retry it. But here's a little bonus to make sure you didn't feel like you just wasted all that time, right? Because... In Gloomhaven, even if you fail the scenario, the passage of time thing wasn't a thing. So you could keep everything and it just, you didn't feel like it was an exploit because there wasn't this race against time. Now, of course, some people might say like, well, you were not really doing that much because it's unlimited gold, not unlimited resources until you realize that there's ways throughout the campaign of converting gold to resources. There's eventually unlocking ways to spend gold on enhancements. Could you imagine enhancements with unlimited gold? Just pointing that out there. And so the balance of the game is built around those resources and gold within that time frame. And I'm also trying to imagine why you'd even bother. Like, if you want a million gold, just do it. No one's going to stop you. Isaac's not going to fly over from California and arrest you for theft of gold, although that would be a very interesting event. Just type in IDDQD and just say you win. Like, skip the scenarios. Just start reading through the scenario book as if you'd won them. What's the point in playing otherwise? So, of course, there is the counterpoint. Why not fix the rules to not allow it? Counter counterpoint. 
the rules don't say cheat and give yourself a million gold. The rules also don't say don't like pick up the attack modifier deck and flip through it and like look through it. It's, it doesn't say specifically you can't do that. It doesn't say that you can't like peek and see what the monsters can do. The, there's so many things that the rules don't specifically spell out for you and you don't do it. Now, of course, the, there's a lot of these implied things where like if it's a deck of cards, there's that and technically within the bounds of the rules. But like, are you trying to capture every possible situation of cheating and dummy proof the game in this kind of setting? Like, so what should Cephala Fair do about that? And the answer is nothing. Nothing needs to be done. Uh, if you want to fail a scenario immediately and retry it, um, and you like, so you don't feel like a wasted uh, a couple hours, you still get the XP, you still get the gold, you know, all that stuff. Just, just, just keep that and try the scenario again in earnest. If you want to just cheat and give yourself a million gold, don't try to rationalize and say, "Hey, within the rules, just put a million gold and say you cheated." That's fine too. Play the game how you want to. Um, it just, just. It's, it just also surprises me when I see some people saying, like, hey, I didn't enjoy Gloomhaven very much, so I tried these rules. The, the house rules made it, we got through the campaign, but I didn't like the game. Like, you weren't playing the game. And that's really the thing here. You're not actually going to, if you have a million gold, if you found this exploit, you're not actually going to enjoy the game the way it was meant and intended to be played. You are depriving yourself of that experience. The discussion started off with people asking, Hey, is this legal? Did we do this right? Is this cheating? Uh, yeah. Just because it's like red is written that way doesn't mean you have to consider intent. It's very evident that you're not meant to be doing this, especially the fact that you had to go online and ask. I mean, is this legal? Yeah, sure, it is. But like, it's still cheating. That's all it is. And I'm not saying it's never okay to cheat. There's been times where it's been like, the group's been burnt out, we draw the last thing for a scenario, and it's a miss. I've heard of groups where like, we're like, we're gonna pretend that was a plus zero and move on. Honestly, if you don't want to replay that whole scenario and it came down to one draw, just, just go ahead. There's been discussions where some people said like, we had a close call, but we just called a plus zero. You know, that's fine, because for your own enjoyment of the game, and ultimately a lot of times, sometimes just bad shuffles get you, so going on ahead is that and sometimes you say man f it that was three hours i'm not wasting time on that anymore now it's also weird to say like uh we couldn't beat scenario 72 so we just skipped it and said do we want it and there's a little bit of a difference there but there, i do understand the idea of like just skipping ahead and saying screw it or some groups just have difficulty because maybe one player doesn't know the correct way to like play well and now they get frustrated so sometimes people do have more open table talk and you can just understand that the game does get a little bit easier and that's okay as well so like it's okay to either take game variants or a little bit in time as long as it doesn't impact the spirit of the game and or your fun whereas having unlimited gold because you found an exploit would drastically change how the game is played period so just do the rule set do what it was designed to do take you through the lovely world of Frosthaven, north of the copper necks and use the limited resource window to do as much as you can before harsh winter arrives so i hope you at least found this at least somewhat insightful i do personally think that there's a lot of things you can do to make a rule set more flexible or to dummy proof it but i don't think this is necessary in this case if you do uh what are some other options you have here and or are there certain things in the rules that you don't like that you've changed on your own feel free to comment below so thanks all of you for watching thank you our patrons patrons are wonderful people if you actually do want to join the rage badger community we have a discord and we'll put a link in the description below it's mostly ship posting and honestly that's one of the best parts about it um we do talk about frost haven quite a lot but i have to say ship posting and memes is probably absolutely number one as much as uh, gay stuff which pops up quite a bit as well so uh thanks all of you i hope you can see you in the community thanks all of you patrons for supporting the channel and thanks all of you for watching